So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, setting up an SDR to uh, feed into your terminal unit. That way, if you're on the East Coast or the West Coast, or maybe you don't have that great of an antenna at home, or no antenna at home or radio, but you want to uh, experience the wide world of uh, teletype and all the other uh, mediums that are out there for digital, uh, just to listen in, uh, we're going to show you how like most people would. And we're going to go ahead and type in KFS SDR. Um, the other one you can use that Nick likes to use is KPH. Most SDRs work the same, uh, but we'll go here. So you click on KFS Web SDR, and it pops up just like this. I like to mute it so we don't have to hear the sound while I'm doing this presentation. Uh, go ahead and put your call sign in the top. It helps to identify where you're at. And then let's go ahead and change this to 7087. And go ahead and hit upper sideband wide. And because I like to see all the signals that are coming, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my waterfall. Maybe not that much. And as you can see here, uh, this will give you a nice bandwidth uh, picture of all of the teletype signals that are coming in. Of course, they're all going to be in the same spot, but you're going to see uh, very strong ones from people that are somewhat close and weak ones from people that are far away. This is 40 meters. We're doing this in the day, so you know there's not a ton of propagation, um, so it's a little harder to go back and forth. Um, you're going to want to hit squelch unless your terminal unit has a pretty good mark hold. This will keep it from... Uh, printing uh, garbage characters in between actual real transmissions. And you can raise and lower your passband tuning here. Um, for 850 shifts, you know, you pretty much need it fairly wide. And as you can see, if you scroll on down, it says there's currently 45 users on this web SDR, now 44. And you can see this SDR goes from 80 meters all the way through 10 and 11 meters. So um, it's never let me down. It's a great uh, uh, SDR. So now, if you want to listen to the East Coast one, let's go back to Google. And let's go ahead and look up the one I like to use is the Lumpkin Schools SDR. And there it is, Web SDR at EM84AN. The graphic interface on this one is a little more uh, up-to-date, uh, a little more uh, eye-friendly, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and click here to start the audio. And once again, let's go ahead and mute it, since we're doing the presentation. And you're also going to want to squelch out uh, the uh, audio to get rid of any junk. So let's take her over to 40 meters. Let's come on down to 7087. upper sideband and let's go ahead and zoom in on the waterfall now if you grab the waterfall from the picture side you can slide it around if you grab it down here from the frequency side you'll actually change the frequencies once again on this one also I forgot to mention you can put your location or your call sign so I'm gonna go ahead and put in my call sign And as you can see, here's all the other people that are using it. It says there's 57 users on this one. This is a little more expanded SDR. This one does from 80 meters all the way through uh, 10 meters. It also uh, has a VHF and a UHF uh, SDR as well. So this one can be used for the East Coast. I've gotten everybody all the way up from Pennsylvania down to Louisiana on this one and everything in between. Uh, this will reach out to Texas and uh, the Florida area also. Um, I can hear Nick England K4NYW really well on this one, so this is one of the reasons I chose it. All right. Okay. Now, as far as connecting to your terminal unit, it's pretty simple. So I'm using a TU-170, which uh, I have 
have a second one right here. So it's a model like this. The uh, audio input is here on the back. It says receiver audio, so ground receiver audio. Um, the way I connect is basically very simple. Uh, it's a headphone jack for your computer. Um, it can be stereo. Um, you have to combine them together because otherwise you'll get low output, but uh, a couple of eyelets on the end here, connects right to the back of that, ready to go. Um, just adjust the volume level to uh, uh, satisfy the needs of the terminal unit, and then you should be printing teletype. If you are doing any kind of uh, RTTY uh, on uh, bandwidth, or bandwidth right now on HF, um, this is no different. Uh, the SDR in your computer just replaces the, uh, the the radio itself. So, well, you won't be able to transmit via the SDR. For anybody who has questions on how that works, the way it works is you receive via the SDR, and then you transmit with your own transmitter. Uh, there's been a lot of questions on how it works uh, when we bring in the East Coast gang to the West Coast and vice versa. And the way that that works is I'm listening to an SDR, say, in Georgia, and uh, Nick England, K4, NYW, he's transmitting. He's listening to an SDR over here for his receive side, but he's transmitting, transmitting from his QTH, just as he normally would. But because I'm listening to an SDR over on the East Coast and feeding it into my system on the receive side, um, I can hear him transmitting. Now, the way that works is I pick up his transmission, I punch it out on tape and then immediately feed it into a TD, which automatically runs it into another terminal unit and transmits uh, directly out on my Kenwood here at my QTH uh, on the West Coast. So effectively bringing Nick England from the East Coast to the West Coast and transmitting here using basically an internet jump. So uh, not 100%. Um, airwaves, but a good portion of it. It does require me to hear him off the air, and it does require him to transmit in order for me to uh, to hear him uh, and retransmit him. So, if you have any questions, you know, let me know. It's uh, uh, pretty simple once it gets going. Most of the legwork happens on my end or Nick's end um, because of switching back and forth between the paper tape punches and the terminal units and and uh, so on. So. That's everything when it comes to using the SDR and your uh, teletype.